Hello, everyone, and welcome to ClassWithMason.com. I'm Mason, your host for today. And I'm Emily, here to explore another great piece of literature with you all. Today, we're diving into one of John Keats' shorter yet profound poems, The Human Seasons. This is episode three of our first season, and we're excited to talk about this one. Absolutely, Emily. The Human Seasons is a fantastic example of how Keats uses the natural world to reflect the human experience. He does this by comparing the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter to the stages of life. It's just 14 lines, but it's packed with meaning. Right. The poem opens with a pretty straightforward idea the year is divided into four seasons, but then Keats makes a deeper comparison by saying that, just like the seasons the human mind goes through its own cycle, each season represents a different phase of life. Exactly. Let's break it down a bit. Spring or lusty spring, as Keats calls it, is first. Here he's talking about youth. This is when life is full of energy, creativity, and beauty. It's all about imagination and the sense of endless possibilities. Wouldn't you say, Emily, that Keats is almost romanticizing this phase of life? Oh, definitely. Spring is all about vibrancy and optimism. He's capturing that feeling when we're young and everything seems within reach. The mind is eager, ready to embrace all the beauty and opportunities around us. It's like the innocence and excitement of being young. Yeah, I love that interpretation. Then we move into summer, which represents a different stage, one of contemplation and dreaming. The mind isn't as wild as in youth, but it's more reflective. Almost like the heat of the summer sun slows things down, the imagery here suggests a mind indulging in thoughts, sort of soaking in the warmth of its own dreams. That's true. Keats talks about how summer is about luxurious contemplation. He uses the phrase pondering honeyed cud, which is such an interesting metaphor. It makes me think of someone reminiscing about the sweetness of past experiences. It's a more introspective time, where we think about life on a deeper level. And then we move into autumn, which Keats associates with maturity and contentment. It's a quieter phase of life, where we're not chasing after beauty or excitement like in spring and summer. Instead, there's this acceptance of things as they are. The mind is at peace, watching things pass by without feeling the need to act on them. Right, it's like in autumn, there's a sense of being okay with life's transience. We've reached a point where we can sit back and reflect, knowing that not everything lasts, but that's okay. I think the line about quiet coves in this section really conveys that feeling of calm observation. Yeah, and it's a big shift from the earlier seasons. By autumn, we're not so focused on beauty or dreams. Instead, we're more focused on being content. And that brings us to the final season, winter. Which Keats describes as pale misfeature, this is where mortality comes into play. Winter is the season of decline, where life winds down, and we face the reality of our own fragility. Yeah. It's a sobering thought, but Keats presents it in a way that feels natural like an inevitable conclusion to the cycle. The idea that winter is the end, the season where everything slows down, reminds us that life is temporary. But he doesn't present it with fear, does he? No, not at all. He seems to accept it as part of the natural order. The entire poem feels like Keats is guiding us through the stages of life with an understanding that each has its own purpose and beauty, even winter with its connotations of death. It's just another step in the journey. It's a very mature perspective, especially considering Keats wrote this when he was so young he passed away at just 25. That's what makes it even more impressive. Despite his youth, he had such a profound grasp of life's fleeting nature. Now, let's talk about some of the themes. One of the biggest themes here is obviously seasons and time, which Keats uses as a metaphor for the different stages of human life. Time passes and with it we experience these different phases each with its own challenges and rewards. Exactly. And another key theme is youth and imagination. Spring symbolizes youth when the mind is bursting with ideas and creativity. Keats emphasizes how in our younger years we're eager to explore the world and its beauty. Everything seems possible. Then as we mentioned earlier, contemplation and dreams are central to summer. It's a time for the mind to indulge in its own thoughts, almost like reaching for something higher, maybe even a spiritual connection. Keats uses the warmth of summer to symbolize the comfort and richness of our dreams. Yes, and by autumn, we get into the theme of maturity and contentment. This is when the mind accepts that things come and go. We're no longer chasing after beauty like in spring. Instead, we're more content with just observing life as it is, understanding that beauty fades. And then we hit mortality and human nature in winter. Keats uses winter to remind us of our mortality, that we're not eternal and life inevitably reaches its conclusion. But like we said earlier, it's not a tragic ending. It's more like an acknowledgement that this is how the cycle of life works. Now let's do a quick analysis of the poem, starting with how Keats uses symbolism. 
the seasons clearly symbolize the stages of life. Spring represents youth, summers for reflection, autumn brings maturity, and winter symbolizes the end of life. It's simple but incredibly effective. I agree. Each season also has its own distinct mood. Spring is full of energy and optimism, summer feels more thoughtful and dreamy, autumn is calm and introspective, and winter is a little melancholic but also accepting. Keats really captures the full range of human experience in just a few lines. And don't forget the language, Keats' choice of words like lusty spring, honeyed cud, and pale misfeature really enhances the imagery. These phrases invite the reader to see, feel, and almost experience the passage of time as Keats envisions it. Exactly. And even though Keats didn't live to old age, he seemed to have a real understanding of life's journey. That's what makes the human season so poignant. It feels like a personal reflection on life cycles, from youthful energy to the quiet acceptance of our final days. So to wrap up The Human Seasons by John Keats is a brilliant metaphor for the stages of human life. Through the imagery of nature seasons, Keats captures the beauty, contemplation, maturity, and eventual decline that we all experience. It's a short poem, but it leaves a lasting impression. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of The Human Seasons. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe to classwithmason.com so you don't miss our next deep dive into another classic work of literature. We'll see you next time where we'll continue unraveling the rich world of poetry and prose. Until then, keep reading, keep reflecting, and stay curious.